Good morning, everyone, on this Thursday morning, towards the end of January already. We give thanks that we have this new day um, to be in God's word, to be in fellowship with one another, and to um, rejoice in the day the Lord has made. So we gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. You have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. But today we continue with the clothing of the king and we're at the power of a cloak from Mark 5, 27 and 28. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. It is, it's easy to forget the healing of a bleeding woman wasn't the story Mark was trying to tell. This woman who had, been bled, who had bled uncontrollably for 12 years was a footnote in the story of Jesus' raising Jairus' um, daughter from the dead. Jesus' main focus wasn't healing this woman. Instead, he was fighting his way through a crowd, a crowd so large that it pressed around him, Mark 5, 24. Most of us can relate to the, to the feeling of getting caught up in the unpredictability of a large crowd. It's hot, it's loud, and it can at times be terrifying. Needless to say, Jesus had other things to worry about. And yet the women, woman knew that if she could just touch Jesus's dusty robe, most likely well worn and in need of a wash from his many travels, if her fingers could merely graze the fibers that enveloped him, she would be healed because the woman believed that Jesus alone could be the source of her healing. Jesus' clothes didn't heal because they were special nor intricate. On the surface, they didn't indicate his kingly and priestly identity, but there was undoubtedly power in his cloak. Jesus's clothes healed because they covered the son of God himself. His power and his proximity are in, in, in extrip in extrip yeah, I can't say that word, they're linked. I'll say that way. <laughs> when Jesus is so too, where Jesus is so too is the power of healing faith, faith that which comes from Jesus and is centered on Jesus. Just as Jesus drew a crowd that day, he drew the bleeding woman to himself. And today through his word and sacraments, he draws you near so that you can receive his good gifts. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son to become weak so that I might be saved. Help me to live in the power of his resurrection and the power and the promise of mine. Amen. Well, thinking about crowds, let's start there. So several came to mind. Um, crowds that are frightening and crowds that are just annoying and crowds that are exciting. Um, I think of, I mean, I lived by the Minnesota State Fairgrounds for about six years and million people or so came through in the course of 12 days um, and we were by the main entrance so a lot of them parked in our yard it felt like um, or in our neighborhood and you'd get in and there'd be times when you do the shuffle where you could like maybe move your foot four inches forward um, because the person before you was moving theirs about four inches forward and this whole acres upon acres of space were filled especially a certain um of the roads in in this um, the state fairgrounds, you could go to Old Machinery Hill by the tractors, and you'd probably have space to move a whole stride. But around the animals, around the food, around the bigger attractions, you would be shuffling. Um, and it was, it, and on hotter days, it got bad. Um, 
if somebody had spilled stuff, it got sticky and you um, have to figure that out. If anybody got anxious, it's kind of like that traffic that the anxiety would just kind of roll back towards wherever you were and you would wonder what was happening. Um, I did get good at the course of six years of finding the shortcuts, finding the ways to get to from point A to point B and avoid the crowd. Because while the experience of the fair was wonderful, the shuffling four inches at a time was not. Um, can you imagine 10,000 steps a day when it's a shuffle like that? Not, not my cup of tea. So that's one of, you know, people come and they seek that out because they want to get into a concert or they want to go into a big event. And as long as people stay calm, it's okay. But if any kind of violence happen or people get frightened and start to move, then it's dangerous in a, in a moment. Um, so that, that vulnerability, keeping your kids close, um, knowing where they are. I know people who actually like permanent markered their, um, their addresses or pinned them on their clo the clothing of their children in case they got separated. Um, and then you have other other crowds. Um, people want, I remember the Black Friday, it hasn't happened as much anymore, but Black Friday rushed to get in to buy the best deals. Um, in this case, wanting to see Jesus, wanting to see a political figure, let's say, the Pope. Um, I think Taylor Swift and getting to her concerts these days, um, the wanting to be in proximity to um, greatness, to power to influence will make people stand in the crowd. And then you have protests and you have other things like that that can also have that tension. Um, and in some countries or in some places they can they do also become violent. Um, in some places they stay peaceful. And the the crowd mentality is a real thing. It can um, you are part of a unit, almost becoming like a willow tree grove or um, that you're all connected by your feet on the same same platform at the same time. So into that, those images and the other images I'm sure you all have in your minds of big crowds you've been in and how they make you feel. If you're short, it's a whole nother thing than if you're tall and you can see at a distance. If you can only see the shoulder blades, the person in front of you, very different experience than if you can actually see your destination. So this woman in need and probably ostracized because of her uncleanliness by by um, by the law of ritual cleaning laws saw Jesus coming. So sees this big crowd, sees Jesus coming, had heard so the gospel had gotten into her ears, had heard that he could heal and trusted that word. So she had faith um, by the word already having gotten to her. And so she tried to get to the get to Jesus. And I'm sure kind of like going in a river in a current, she kind of at an angle was trying to hit hit where he would hit, anticipated how far he would go, working her way in that crowd. And her goal was if I can just touch him, um, if I can just get that close to him, I will be healed. And she is, and it's miraculous. But the point also is, as our, our writer today is talking about, that it's not his clothes that are, are, are powerful. If he took them off and laid them down, they're not going to heal anybody. Um, they are, they don't, they're not imbibed with holiness. Um, otherwise he could just touch a bunch of clothes or put them on and that could be his ministry. I'm going to put this shawl on and okay, next. And he could give us all an individual shawl or an individual square of fabric to hold in our hands as our little token of health and well-being. Our Lord doesn't do that. Um, what he does instead is he goes to the cross, he um, dies for us, and then he clothes us in his righteousness. Um, so the proximity to his power is that he has given it to us. He has given us his blessing. He has given us his holiness. We are holy because of him. So that cloak that the woman touched is the one that wraps us when we are baptized in God's word in God's favor, in God's presence. Um, so we are in proximity to God all the time. Does that make you wonder? Do we think about it that way? I mean, it feels like God is far off sometimes. But when you're in that crowd and you're anxious or when you're excited, when you want to get towards 
um, a goal, whether it is a physical goal of like, if I just get here, everything will be okay. Or if I just get to this person, or if I get through this this challenge or sacrifice, or if I get through this year, then I will be blessed. And there's always this striving and this going towards and moving with or against a crowd or a current. Um, and instead, Christ does something different for all of us. We do not need to be the woman who goes to the crowd hoping to be able to touch. We already have the word that's come to us that has gathered us, that has enveloped us in the word. So it's the power of Christ that heals you, that reminds you that you are not lost and forsaken in the midst of a crowd, that if you are in the midst of 12 years of agony, you are not alone, that your Lord is with you. So our faith comes from Christ, who already has been and is with you wrapping you in his grace and mercy all the days of your life. No matter if you're alone or if you're in a crowd of thousands, God has found you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks that even though we find ourselves one among many, even though the current of our world seems to flow against us or keep us and hold us back from the realization of, of peace, and of, of um, wellness, of rightness. We give thanks that you, you have found us, that you have brought us your dawn and your light, that you have clothed us in your righteousness. Remind us that we are wrapped in your love every step that we take in our day. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we rejoice. We ask for you to be with those in need of your healing this day. Whether it's something small, that pinky toe that got something dropped on and hurts beyond belief, or when you bite your cheek and it just keeps on bothering you all day long, or if it's something big, a cancer that has metath metathesized, um, a diagnosis that brings fear, a, um, a death. We ask that you are in all those moments, giving us your, your, your new creation, getting us through the day, through the hour, through the moment, and reminding us that you are there. Whether it's been 12 years or 12 seconds, that you are there. Remind us of that, Lord, and help us to remind others too, to give your presence by speaking your name, by speaking your word of comfort into those moments that need it most. For the gifts of relationship with others, Lord, we rejoice and we ask for you to give us patience with those who try our patience. We ask you to um, help us abound in love and have others love us. Give us an extra measure of grace for one another and remind us um, that each person in our family, in our community, um, is fearfully and wonderfully made by you. So redeem us, Lord. Redeem our relationships and help us to find a pathway forward together. For the communion of faith in your church, Lord, we thank you and we thank you for the ministry of this last year together. And we ask that you continue to bless our community you help us to um, deepen our relationships and connectedness with one another. Um, it's amazing to see the fruit that that bears, Lord, when it's needed. Um, it's humbling to see how being a community matters so much when, when one of the members of our congregation or community are in need, that you create connections that we don't even know what, will, what they will mean 
when the time comes. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for the ongoing conflicts in Israel, Palestine, and Russia, and Ukraine. We pray for China. We pray for um, Central American countries. And we pray for our country and the local and um, federal elected officials. We pray for this election year. And we pray for your your daily bread for each of us. And for the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare who might be in fear of what might come if, with um, changes in government or if government doesn't change, the fear that that could have and that crowd mentality of, of being swayed so quickly. We ask that you are with each individual person, whether it is in their, their needs for food and shelter or if it's their need to um, have their anxiety and their fear be held by you. Um, we ask that you provide all those good gifts. And for all who work for peace and international harmony, help us to bloom and to um, continue to, to plant the seeds of peace for each generation, for each moment, for each need. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we give thanks. And for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, help us to continue to proclaim your word. Continue to strengthen us in, in faith so that we might um, continue to be your church here, now, and wherever we go out into the world in your name. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.